So, bending. Um, it's stuff that um, it's the thing that could, that that could, could, could causes spectacular for, 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 for failures like this to who who uh, occur. Um, it's kind of wild crap, um, and that's and it, it, it's actually normally the thing that we are the most worried about in a in a in a system when we're doing structural analysis. Normal stress and shear stress all contribute. Um, and torsional and torsional stress and all the stresses that we've talked about all kind of all can contribute to failure in their own in, in their own ways. Normally, though, bending stress has the greatest contribution to a, to the to the failure of a system. For example, um, if we go back, I think it was uh, homework two had I'm gonna draw a terrible shovel. There you go. Here's your absolutely terrible. Oh, there's a shovel. Um, it's called your your normal shovel has a a diameter of about in about about an inch and a half, right? Um, say an overall ho oh, 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 a normally an overall length of around four foot. Sound sound about right? So um, say that I'm using that shovel and I'm pushing I'm trying to push this sucker down in in the dirt as hard as I possibly can. And, and Sam really yanked, Sam really yanked it on and stuff. And um, say that lets me generate a force of about 200 pounds going going down the length of the shaft. If you do the math out, look at just normal force or who's or, or, in this. Um, so it's just force over area, right? That gets you about 115 psi. Which, as you found out in your homework, is really not that much. Like it's like that's like child's play for a given shovel to handle. And when you when you computed a cross, and when you computed a, a diameter, it ended up to be really really small. And in fact, it's called unusually so small. Now, if we redirect that to our pounds and say that now you're levering with the shovel, like it's underneath the rock you're trying to pry up. Right, and you generate that 200 pounds going that way. Yeah, say it's a little bit further further in, because usually because usually you have uh, one hand further out, one hand further in. Right, so maybe you're pressing down like there, and that's like 42 inches, so like three and a half feet from where what you call from where you're trying to lever from. If we do out the math for uh, for that, like we're going to talk about it a, a, a bit today, the bending stress from that same from that since from that same load comes out to be twelve thousand six hundred seventy six ps ps psi, and this is why we care about bending him 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 so much, and this is this kind of a part, and this is why being able to identify. Uh, what loads a structural element is going to be in is so uh, is so essential. A load that might seem incons inconsequential because it's only going in tension or compression or in shear might actually be kind of dev might can actually be kind of devastating in bend in in bending. So we're so today we're going to talk. We're not going to get into actually computing numbers like this today. We're, we're, we're going to get more so into the basis of it. Where do you get the where, where, do, you, where do you get the data to compute this number from? And on Thursday we'll talk more about so how we compute stress from moments. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, pi times 0.75 inches squared. Because 0.75 is the. So you take the right. Yep, yep. This is same as any kind of normal stress that we've com computed here. I have a stress going that way. So if I take a cross section in there, I'm looking at circle like like like, like this that has some diameter. That's an inch and a half in this case. Okay. Yeah, force over and force over area. We happy with that? Yeah. Okay, cool.
All right, so. Some, just some other things. I thought, uh, I thought it was kind of cool. Um, if you look at a dam, most dams, not all, all dams, but they're shaped like an arch. And that's because uh, shear and normal stresses are not the dominant factor here. It's bending loads. So if you ever seen an arch and how they're made to resist top loads because a straight beam uh, doesn't resist bending stress as, as well, you can think of this as like an arch going into the reservoir. It's a horizontal arch, um, and, and and that's and that's and it's because bending loads are so dominant. Okay, so but in order to get bending loads, as with everything, we have to be able to determine internal loads. So if you guys remember this fantastic, fantastic, fan, fantastic creature. From like week from from like a, 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 a quick week one, how do, how, how do we if you, if you find say the normal stress in the upper part of that head arm? How, how 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 do we break this down? Okay, so we got pins all over, pins all over the place here. It means you have a bunch of two force members. So forces are direct are directed along this guy. This is not a two force member though, because you have a force right there. Um, so we can't so we can't assume that the for, that which call the force is just from this counterweight. It's directly directed entirely along the beam. Um, let's let, let's let, let's not let's 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 step back a little bit further though. So I have a two thousand pound, a twenty thousand pound uh, weight here, right? What uh, call? This is is one of the external forces on on the system. That's that's going to create my uh, that's going that's what's going to create a load on this thing, right? So what so what so so what would I have to do? Very, very, very first thing, just kind of looking at what's creating the load on this system. What would be the very first thing I'd have to do? Right. Say, hey, as well as as well as any other forces that are acting on this this system. So for now, let's take the system to be this whole thing. So what are the forces acting on that system? On this whole system, the system. Yeah. Okay, so there's some component, and then from the weight of, of the ram, or I can say, because the because the normal force is probably going to include more than just the weight of this and the weight, just 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 the weight of this, or just the weight of the weight of this guy. It's going to be some combination of the two. So if I can say that there's some. Weight, so some force of, of, of gravity there. There's some force of gravity acting on this guy, but how does that translate into our system? You know. How does this force get, trans, get transmitted to the crane arm? Yeah, so where is it, so where is it acting? Yeah. So we have some weight here, force counterweight, say, force of gravity there. What else do we got? Do we have any? Do we have any reaction loads? Yeah. So we have some reaction force here. And some reaction force here that we don't know the direction of. So this is like F ram is like F arm Y and like F arm X. So that, those should be all of our external whole forces act, act on this system. 
and say that I just so, okay, that's 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 great. Now I want him to find internal loads. Say just up here. What I what call what I need to know anything about what's going on down down here from just from just looking up here? No. No. Because what's up because it is up because up because up here you have this is so you have this counterweight pulling on one side and that and that load needs to be transmitted down to the, the ram and the rest of the arm what's going to what's going to transmit that load uh, the arm right like if i have this if i have this piece 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 of paper and you pull and you pull and, and you pull on it it, 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 the, the paper is transmitting the load between our but between our hands. There can be other loads pushing on your arm or, or my arm, or, 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 but this paper ha has to ultimately trans trans tra transmit whatever load is being placed on it. And in this case, that load is the counterweight. So we. Simplify this a little bit. And we look just at the end of that arm. We have the counterweight there. This is a section. So there's some set of forces acting on act acting on that section, say um, some shear force, some normal force. These are the forces that are being transmitted by the material of that arm. Okay, do you all with me here? How would I find the magnitude of those two force the magnitude of those two forces? And I think that this is at an angle of uh, 32.2 degrees. How, how do I find the magnitude of those forces? Yeah, that's all. So and do something like some force Y or some force X and get which call and get which call and get hit, hit, hit the contributions of each of these to counter the to which call the count of the weight of the counter of the count of the counterweight. Uh, so if I define some some positive directions here, uh, how would I get how 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 would I form how do I formulate say the summation of forces in the Y? Okay, negative FCW plus okay. Is F normal going in a positive direction? Correct. So this so this so this guy, if I this is this is also a thirty-two Point two degree ang ang angle here, going straight, going straight, did did down. So that means F normal times sine theta to get sorry cosine theta to get my y to 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 get my y direction. Uh, because thirty two point two is the angle between the vertical and the arm. And if normal is pointing in the direction of the arm uh, by vertical angles, this is also theta. So in the y, so in the y direction you have to use cosine. Okay. Does that make sense to, sense to everyone? Cool. Okay. Uh, so that's for the normal force, and then again for uh, 
shear. Shear is going off this way. Let's see if I can make another angle here. So this one, this angle, which is called this angle here between that and the vertical would also be. Would it be 32.2? Uh, no, that'd be 32.2 minus that. This would be uh, 90 degrees minus 32.2. So it would be what plus say again uh yes there's seven point seven eight yeah and that would be cosine again. So that's we call that sum sum of forces y, and then you go through a similar a a a exercise to get sum of forces in the x. I'm not going to finish this just because I, I want you to get the idea of, of doing it. We're going to do it with a diff with a different system, looking at bending moments in a second. But this is what it's called. But this is is, is the basic I idea that's going to underlay a lot of what we're going to, to uh, do. Who 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 for all of which call for all of, 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 of the bending unit and really for most of this, this, this class. Based on some external loading, the material has to transmit the forces and moments associated with that, lo with that loading and that results in some internal forces and internal bending, bending moments, which, are, which we're going to talk about in a, in a minute. And you find them by going through this kind of a method. All right? So, if you're, so, if, so if you're not comfortable with this, we're going to get we're, we're, we're going to get comf, comfortable with 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 it. And if not, and if that doesn't work still, I'd recommend practicing and talk and call it stopping by my office for more prep for from for, 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 for more practice. Any questions on this? Before there we go. Okay. Okay. So let's so who, 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 in that example we looked at normal and shear forces. Now we're going to add in bending in bending moments. So here let's just have a basic shelf with an L with an, with an L bracket. We're going to translate this into a free body diagram and look at how the shear and bending the shear forces and bending moments are going to uh, we've conveniently chosen a system that doesn't have any normal forces in it, just for simplest, just for simplicity, at least not in the area that we care about. Um, and we're called, so we're going to have a look at that. So here we have L bracket. Uh, it's holding up a, a, a hunk of wood. But let's just consider the L bracket for a, for a second. So it's just something like this. Looks like he, 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 he might be a quarter inch thick. And then that looks like a he, 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 one by 10. So from there and there, it's about eight and a half inches. We could consider this thing here, but should, but do we, but it's called from a Failure of this part pers perspective, do we care about this little hook thing? What? If that's starting to hold things up, then the other part would have failed. Yeah. This, which you, can, you can kind of see in the picture, the wood's not actually pressing against it. It's not exerting any force on it. If there's no force on it, there's no stress. <laughs> there's no way that this guy at the very end is transmitting any load to the rest of the part. <laughs> so therefore, we don't really care about that particular element. We can rule it out as having any, any stress in it. So, we're all, so that means we're only going to look from the edge of that hook back. So essentially, simplifying the system to that. What about this this guy here? Do we care? Do we care about that too much? Yeah. Why? 
that's where it's going to yield. Okay, so uh, we're, so this is a point of concern for, for us. This is where we're going, we should expect the maximum stresses since, like, like we said before, the maximum stresses usually come from bending. You can probably expect the maximum bending moment to occur here. If you think of it as like a big lever arm, the most effective point by a lever is going to be the point that you're levering at. Um, however, however, um, we only need to know the stresses is, is there, um, which are going to be the greatest, just they're, they're going to be the greatest in this entire region, not at any given point in that region. So we, so for purposes of simplicity, we'd actually just say, this is fixed to who, 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 a wall, and we want to know the maximum stresses at the wall. Does that make, does that make, does that make sense? Why, 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 or why not? Also good, which call which call also good at intuition. In the corner, we can probably expect a stress a stress concentration in that. So the so so the failure of this whole thing, if it's if it's going to happen, it's probably going to happen right there. So we so we effectively can ignore the bit that's fixed to the wall and just treat this as a can as a cantilevered beam, meaning it's only supported at one end that is fixed to the wall. If we wanted to be a little bit more thorough about it, we, we, we could say that, so right there's the eight and a half inch long thing. Uh, we could say that it had a little bit more distance standing off from the wall, but it looks like that board goes almost the entire her, her way in. So we're just gonna treat it as an eight and a half inch long cantilever beam fixed to the wall at one of its, 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 its ends. Um, because that's, because it kind of highlights what we're most concerned about in this system and accurately, somewhat accurately reflects what's phys, what's, what is of physical importance here, okay? So in this case, what's our external load? A board, right. Is that a point load or a distributed load? Right. How, so we're going to deal with its distributedness in a minute. For right now, we're going to say it's a point. For now, we're just, we're just going to say a point load, just so we can get to the, the idea of how to do a shear and bending moment di di diagram. So for here, get rid of this guy for a second. Go over here. Quarter inch. I'm just going to say got some home load of about 20 pounds that's right in the center of, of, of the bracket. All right? For, for simplicity, he, he, he's sick. Uh, however, that's not the, ex the only external load, right? What's, what, what's the other ones? What are the other ones? The wall, right, right, the support. What's that going to be? Okay, so th there are two implications from what you said, right? Some of forces have to be the same and the sum of moments have, have to be the same. Both of them have to come out to zero. So therefore there must be some, 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 some force and some and some moment. Draw some positive directions here. Because the force can't, maybe try, you, you, you need both because this 20 pound load is going to create a moment and it's also and it's also and it's also a force. So you need to be able to rack both of those at the wall. So what are the magnitudes of those? Okay, so that one's straightforward enough. I do sum force y, f support minus 
apply a libuffs equals a zero. That means F support equals 20 libuffs. Cool. How about the other one? Right, because if, if, if I do some of the moments, I come out to the same sort of, uh, of a thing. So some moments, the 20 pounds is going in the negative direction, according to how I've de defined it anyhow. Oh, if I take my moments around the end of the beam there. So 20, 20, 20 pound force times 4.25 inches. Every, every moment needs a force and a, and, and a distance. And then there's some concentrated su support moment that I'm trying to find. So, yep, that's it. That's a plus sign, I promise. So yeah, it comes out to, to, to be something like 84? 85. Okay. <laughs> so something like 85 pound inches or inch pounds, however you want to state that, because the English system is weird. So, inch pounds. Okay, we happy with that? Sweet. All right. Now for now and now for the fun part. So we have all the loads. Now we have to, now the same as in the craning sample, same as in like every problem we've done, we need to find internal loads. So what are we, so what are we going to do now? Our favorite, our favorite activity. I'm just going to move this up out of the way. It's called, called take, it's called, called take in a section, right? So, Let's take a section of this, of this, say, here. Let's make this some distance x, because we're going to slide this around and see what changes, all right? So if I look at the section there, and going from the wall out. So some F support, some moment at the support. I haven't necessarily gotten to the 20 pounds on the ex external load yet. Still, still, so still getting there. This distance X have some internal shear load. And what's different here is that, well, I don't want to say this. There, there's also some internal bending moment too. We've we've kind of ignored this in 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 the past. It's it's been there. We've just kind of said, oh, don't worry about the bending moment. So bending moment. All right. So. How do I find the magnitudes of those? Same same thing as before, right? So let's start with summation of forces because that's because that's an easy because that's an easy one. What are the forces here? Right. And that's still equals zero because hopefully that thing is not moving. And so that's so that's so that's easy enough. Shear force is just e equal and opposite to the uh, uh, support driven force. Cool. Now, what about moments? Um, well, so where are my summing moments around? 
Um, let's let's do it out here, just so we don't have to worry about the magnitude of that of that of of, of that guy, because that one might change. These at least will all stay the same, so it might be more convenient down down the line. So let's sum. So let's sum moments around here. Right at, which I'll write at the section. So what's that come out to be? Say again. Okay, you have M support. Yeah. They are they are going in the same direction. So it's actually so so it's actually plus because they're both going in the positive direction. What else is making a moment around? The section. Does the support force make a moment around the section? Yes, if it makes a moment, it is it is included in the summation in the summation of moments. Yep, same same as in um, whenever we did problems in it's called problems that required statics. Anything that created a moment. So any force acting at a dis acting at a di acting at a distance. So what would the magnitude of that moment be? Yeah. And sine is. You sure? Yeah. Right. Uh, so there's so here. If we sum moments around the support, does the force of the support generate any moment there? Why? Right. So there has to be some con some 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 concentrated mo moment there in order to react the moment that's being created by the twenty pound external load. Here. All those, all those, all those, all, all, all those, all those loads exist at the support, and we're kind of marching out from, 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 from there. And if you look at summation of forces, summation of moments, I have to transmit both of those loads. So that's why they both exist. So that's why they both fact, factor in, in 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 into our internal loading. And because we're at a distance from the force of this support, it's it's going to create a moment too. It's going to contribute to the bending moment. Cool. Okay. All right. So just to finish this off, we need a little bit more space. Uh, minus F support times X. Okay. So this so this makes things a little bit more interesting. Because it means that the magnitude of the bending moment is actually going to change as I go out along the beam, right? Hey, 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 because I because now I have distance inside of this equation, inside of this equation. So, if I uh, just going to erase this for this for for a second. So if I drew a graph of x and uh, bending moment, internal bending moment, when f support, sorry, when x equals 0, when, when x equals 0, if I do my math here, I'm going to end up with m bend Sorry, this is sorry. This is the general case first. If I just do the math here and solve for the internal bending moment, I should get something like F support X minus M support, right? So, if X equals zero, um, I should call I just end up with the the the, the support moment, right? And as X increases. Does the bending moment get smaller, larger, or stay the same? Okay. 
I so I hear smaller and larger. Okay. I, 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 I don't know. So if x is 0, we end up with a negative number that's relatively large, right? Uh, 85 inch pounds. Let's start with that. Negative. Larger is more positive, which means the magnitude gets smaller, right? Okay. So you both so you both are right. <laughs> okay. So we start from from there, and as x increases, we're adding a positive number to her to it. Or you can also think of this as kind of the equation for a line, right? Y equals m x plus b. So I can draw a line here out to out to zero that has a slope of 20 pounds per uh, what 4.25 inches because that's the moment generated by 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 that head force and that should be where it hits zero um, uh, it, should, it, it should be a slope of 20 pounds force per, per, per 4.25 inches because if I'm thinking that right. Is it? Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, yeah, sorry. It's 20 pp. Yeah, sorry, it is just 20 pp. It is just 20 pounds per inch. I have two. I have two. I got two. I, sorry, it's just 20. Sorry, it's just 20, 20 pounds. I got two. I got two. I got two fancy. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's the slope of this is just 20. 20 pounds because here at 4.25 inches, which if you recall from the diagram, the original or the original in the original problem, that is where the external load, the only external load was that made that 85 inch pound bending moment. So we so it would make sense that the internal bending moment would be zero when there is no more moment, right? So like if F support is 20 pounds and X is 4.25 inches, this should entirely cancel out the moment from the, from the support. Does that, does that does that make sig, sig sense to everyone? Cool. So that so that kind of shows the correspondence of all this with our original free free body di free body diagram, and kind of confirms our intuition about how this particular part, this L this L bracket, is going is going to react to a load. That the most critical point is going to be right next to the support because that's where the bending <laughs> moment, the, the internal bending moment that the material has to transmit is the highest. And we could draw a similar graph if this is a graph of bending moment, we could draw a similar graph of shear force. What's this one going to look like? Would it be? Okay. So if we look at our section from bef from before, why? Uh, the Fair enough. Force from the support, huh? Yes. Because this support, because the external loading doesn't change, and the magnitude of forces do, doesn't change with dis, with distance with x, be, 
because his F shear is not going to change with for any value of X until you get to where the external loading to where, to where the external loading changes, its magnitude is going to be constant. So I think we said um, well, for this one, it would be different, but I think yeah, it's probably our time we drew it going up. So it's going to be a constant negative 20 pounds until you get to four and a, four and a quarter inches because then our load, because then our external load changes. We have this 20 pound force here. Which, enti which entirely cancels out our support force, right? If I do my sum of forces now, say that I'm past this 20 pound, pound force, this is slowed. The force at the support is now entirely he, he, he countered by, 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 the, by the external load here out on the out on the R bracket. And the shear force goes to zero, right? If I, if, I, if I do my sum of forces, there's not going to be anything, not, not be anything left. And this is out at the end of the beam, at the end, at the end of the at the end of the bracket. And the same is true of the bending moment, right? If I do my summation of moments anywhere beyond the externally of the which is called the 20 pounds pound externally applied with load. There's not there's not gonna be any moment to react either. Her, her, it's already gone and, and it's a, it's already gone to, to 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 zero. I've countered heard the entire force at the support, and I've countered the entire concentrated moment that's at the sub support as soon as I hey, go, go past that 20 pound load. So I'm gonna draw what that looks like quick and uh, we'll call it a day. So if I drew a free body diagram to kind of figure that one out. It looks something like this. So there's my support. Here's my there's my section. My 20 pound external loads floating around here. Distance 4.25 inches from the wall. I have my support force. I have M support. Oh, my concentrated moment that's, uh, that's hanging out there. Then I have some shear force, some internal shear force, and some internal bending moment. So if I do my sum of the forces is here, let's do some force Y. Have F support minus 20 Lobos, uh plus F shear equals zero. F, since F support is 20 pounds, these these two cancel out. F shear equals zero. We're done. I can do the same thing for bending moment. So sum. Wow, it's a terrible summation. Some moments, but some moments around. Oh, I said I'd do it around ten, ten, ten here. Yes. That was for F shear. Yeah, kind of, it's called, kind of like how we just said. Um, I do my sum forces for this FB, which called for, for this FB, for, well, actually for any FBD. If I to ignore all this for a second, if I do sum sum forces here, I have F support uh, plus F shear, right? And and X is not in this equation at all, so. If I solve for F shear, it's going to be a constant negative 20 pounds until we get to this guy. 
Now if I do another summation of forces, I got F support minus 20 Lilliths uh, plus F shear equals zero. And I get that these two cancel out. Therefore, F shear equals zero. Uh, because our, because it solved for a back at back and the back that back in the beginning of the problem, you got it. Cool. So it's so it's a, so it's constant negative uh, twenty pounds. So F shear is constant negative twenty pounds until the middle of, of of the bracket when it moves in a piecewise fashion to zero and stays there for the rest of the beam. And then I can do the same process for finding the. Uh, for which called finding the bending for finding the bending moment and some moments and and, and, and surround and here uh, I don't want to do I don't want to say this okay so we have summation of moments round here and for simplicity Let's call X this now. So we have what M support plus F support times 4.25 plus X, which is plus X um, minus 20 Lilliths. Times x plus m bend equals zero. So we so so, so that had, we can kind of work out to give whatever her, her, her the uh, bending moments going 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 to be on the far on the far side of that uh, external load and should come out to zero. Okay. Any any questions about this? That's all. That's all. That's all I got for today. Then, thanks for stopping by.